Welcome to St. Paul's Evening Devotion on this Wednesday evening. Uh, I am doing this video down from a place that most anyone who has been to St. Paul's less than 15 years probably has not seen down here. This is the basement. Uh, its only main use right now is for the dart ballers. Uh, kind of an innocent plug if you are interested in joining a, a group that gets together and does dart ball when everything starts back up again. Uh, look for those that information in your uh, newsletter to see how you can be involved in getting together with the guys and playing dart ball. Uh, our devotions are focused on right now Psalm 130. And as we keep this look at what God is reminding us about his plans, uh, we need this idea or look at ourselves honestly. Do you like to keep a record of things you've done? Maybe you're a scrapbooker and maybe getting back to that since you've had more time at home. Uh, do you like going through pictures, documenting the time that you've been at home? It was even popular for a little while back. Uh, just take pictures of the meals that you enjoyed at restaurants or at home. I find myself making lists of most things just so I don't forget what I was working on. You can find videos of records of things so that you can learn what to do. Change a tire, change oil, make a meal, put up drywall, change something in your phone. The results are endless. Those are good things and good memories, reasons to have lists. We like to hang on to them, have a record or proof or a reminder. Do you keep a record, though, of your mess-ups? The times you wish you would have made a different choice or done something different. I'd be surprised if someone did. We don't like to keep a record of our failures or the times that we have hurt someone. It's much more natural to forget them or, in fact, to set them aside as though they didn't even happen. We like to remember the things people have done against us, but if we do something by accident to someone else, we like, ah, that wasn't meant, that, was, that should be forgotten. It's much easier, easier for us as human beings to think that we have all the best answers or ways of doing things, and that other thing, others should be doing things the way we do them. And so the records that we like to keep are our victories or our good things. And when we start to think about the things that we've done wrong in the past, it, it uh, makes us a little fearful. What would your scorecard point out if you were to have a record of what your life is? Would it show that you've made more mistakes than good decisions? Perhaps it would be depressing. What if you were to peek at what God sees in your life, all the thoughts and actions? Would you want to see that record? No hiding or forgetting those things that don't seem well or good to us. In some ways, we need to think as though God were keeping a record of us. See where we really stand, what we really need from God, and we need to be honest. We need to see that we aren't God's answer for the perfect mother, grandfather, businessman, teenager, student, and we are far from it. We are in deep need of help. Verse, from, verse 1 from Psalm 130 started us off that way. He points out we are in the depths, and probably a good reason to be down here in the basement. We are in the lowest point. Verse 3 rephrases our position. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? We can't stand before God if he kept a record of everything that we've done, a record of our sins. There's nothing we can do that is going to make that look one bit of good. As we pile up those things that we have done bad, they're far more great, far more numerous than the things that we've done so well. In fact, the psalmist uses the same two names for God as he did in verse 1 and 2. Lord in all capital letters and then Lord with just a capital L. That reminder is that God is the one who provides for salvation. He's the one who plans it out and carries it out for us. And he is also our master. The only source of hope when we are in despair. The only one who has the solution. 
The most basic outline for our position with God goes like this. God demands that we be perfect as he is perfect. There should be no sin at all in our lives. But we are born into sin because we come from sinful parents. And we commit sin against a holy God with our worry and our selfishness and and our exclusive view of things. But Jesus paid for sin. His death on the cross was to rescue the world. And then we look to him as God's solution, as our Savior. Without Jesus, there is no way to God in heaven. Verse 4 then contains the statement that comes from the God of salvation, the Lord in capital letters, there is forgiveness. But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. That's God's plan detailed throughout Scripture. God's plan carried out by Jesus, his death on the cross. His victory over death on Easter Sunday. Therefore, you are feared. I suppose there could be some trembling about that. what God has done. Why would God do that for me? Why would he do that at all? And so there is some trembling, some fear in that way. But the fear that this inspires is reverence, that awe and respect that leads to worship. We respect, we we revere God. What a good and gracious God we have. Living for Jesus and his free forgiveness, showing that love to others who don't deserve it any more or less than you. And that's why we find ourselves here, remembering Maundy Thursday, where Jesus demonstrated his love by serving his disciples and then giving his body and blood for forgiveness. Keeping a record of our sins or wrongdoings doesn't sound like a fun endeavor. It shows us who we really are, but shows even more who our God is. Then he knows the record we would like to hide and then just does something about it. You and I have a record of forgiveness. Let's pray. O most loving Father, you want us to give thanks for all things, to fear nothing except losing you, and to lay all our cares on you, knowing that you care for us. Protect us from faithless fears and worldly anxieties, and grant that no clouds in this mortal life may hide us from the light of your immortal love shown us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we also pray together as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Well, I hope that uh, your week has been going well. We've had some nice weather in the beginning of the week, a little bit of rain today, but uh, it's not been too bad. Uh, A reminder then to look forward to our Monday Thursday service that will be put up tomorrow afternoon, and then our Good Friday service. uh, So we won't have a devotion on Psalm 130 on Good Friday. Tune in for the Good Friday service. And then look forward to our Easter service here at St. Paul's. If you've been noticing in the emails that have been sending out with the devotions, is an opportunity for us to uh, gather together as a synod, as a larger church body, as the Wells, also to celebrate an Easter service as well. Uh, Then we'll continue our look at Psalm 130 once again on Monday. We'll look at verses 5 to 6 as we wait for God. Lord's blessings.